variation in molecules allows organisms a greater ability to respond, survive, and reproduce. So when we start thinking about fitness, a lot of times we don't, we're not talking about how well we can exercise, but we're talking about survival of the fittest. And usually we think of fitness as the ability to not only survive, but reproduce. Fit individuals pass on their genes from one generation to the next. So often we think about this in males battling for dominance, but fitness ties down to the molecular level. So when we look at hemoglobin protein, it has a quaternary structure where different uh, polypeptide chains are organized together, and it changes throughout the lifetime of an individual. So hemoglobin changes its molecular structure, which allows for survival because at the fetal level, Hemoglobin needs a strong affinity for oxygen because it has to pull the oxygen for the baby out of the mother's blood. However, as a person ages and becomes an adult, that hemoglobin is doesn't need it doesn't hold have to pull onto the oxygen quite as strongly because it's more accessible at the lungs and it has to be able to let it go a little bit easier to the tissues of the, the, the adult body. We can also look at phospholipids and a variety of different structures here, which lead to survival in different environments. We can have eukaryote and eubacteria phospholipid bilayers, but a lot of archaea bacteria, a lot of the archaea have mono bi, monolayers instead of bilayers, where the lipids are attached to glycerols on either end of the membrane. You'll see these often in extreme environments, such as hot springs, and where they exist as thermophiles or extremophiles. So bacteria and eukaryotes can also exist in extreme environments, but they have to have a little bit different molecular structure to do so. A lot of these eukaryotes or um, bacteria that exist in really extreme temperature environments have different structures to their proteins, which need to make them more stable. So again, if we're looking at tertiary structure, we're gonna have these intergroup interactions between the different R groups. You're gonna have these salt bridges, these ionic um, bonds forming much more, adding to stability in um, proteins within extreme environments, and you'll probably have a lot more hydrophobic interactions towards the core of those um, proteins as well. You'll also have a lot more chaperone enzymes involved in the folding and holding the proteins in their particular shapes. So we can also see variety when we look at photosynthetic pigments. Um, again, the having different types of chlorophyll receive different wavelengths of light and absorb different wavelengths of light is important when we start thinking about the adaptability towards different times of day and different times of year. As staying on the idea of plants, um, all plants are going to do the Calvin cycle using the Ribisco enzyme, which is going to capture the carbon dioxide into the Calvin cycle. Now, C3 plants um, are going to, Rubisco can do photorespiration. So in hot or and dry times, the stomata will close to avoid losing water. So as those stomata close, oxygen is going to increase and that oxygen concentration is going to start binding to the Rubisco, which then decreases the ability to do the Calvin cycle. However, in C4 plants, um, they have the ability to use this PEP compound to bind up carbon dioxide um, all the time. So then when the stomata do close, they have the ability to continue to supply carbon dioxide to the Rubisco so that oxygen doesn't build up to a level where it would bind to the Rubisco enzyme. Now, CAM plants, again, have this, but 
they only open their stomata at night. And at night, the carbon dioxide is binding onto the PEP and it can then be used during the day to make the Kelvin cycle work. So as we keep going here, again, there's variation at the molecular level, which leads to survival. Again, taking this general product of photosynthesis can be used for a variety of different molecules. Um, plants don't only exist through the use of sugar. Um, the ability to take this molecule and store it into starch allows plants to go dormant. We can also think of this variation at a molecular level when it comes to cellular respiration. Again, we typically always focus on the glucose, but the ability to use a variety of molecules into um, cellular respiration allows us to get ATP um, in, even when diets may change or available molecules might change. And the environment can also change in regards to oxygen. If oxygen is not available, the NADH is able to unload uh, the electrons to lactate or alcohol with fermentation so that this glycolysis can be repetitive in environments where oxygen is scarce. So again, this variation in molecules allows organisms to respond, survive, reproduce, and ultimately have greater fitness.